back to the shop, my name's Matt. So this is part one of two of head bearing replacements. So when I blasted the frame, um, I left the old bearing uh, seats in here so that the bearing surface that the bearings come into contact with in the stem don't get blasted and don't get damaged. So part one is going to be doing the seats for this and then part two is going to be the actual bearing cage races on the actual steering stem. So, you need to get these buggers out and the best way to do that is with a rod. Now, fortunately, the inner diameter of the steering stem tube is smaller than the inner diameter of the races, so you can actually catch the inside of the bearing. And I'll show you some images now. And you can see there, there's a seat sat in there you can see at the top here, there's a seat at the top and this has got a hemispherical shape um, for your rollers to run in. So what I'm going to replace these with is um, conical roller bearings. Um, and you'll see them in a second. Any road. So I've got the bike on the, well the frame, on the uh, bike stand. And uh, I've got the actual frame ratchet strapped to the actual um, stand with some foam and some bubble wrap and stuff to protect the frame. So, it's not perfect, but it's quite sturdy, because obviously we're going to start beating on it. Right then, let's just crack on with it. So this is a piece of drill rod, so it's good to get yourself a good quality piece of steel. Threaded rod, because it's had the uh, threads machined into it and all the rest of it, you know, it gets a bit ropey and weak, and the ends, you can't really stick on. This is an 8mm section of drill rod, this is unhardened and we're gonna and that's important. You want it unhardened, you don't want it hardened because when you whack it it's gonna smash and shatter if you whack it hard enough. So what we'll do is we're just gonna catch the lip and I'll put a drawing up now and you can see this is how they recommend you do it anyway. So the whole idea is to tap around the bearing try and get it to uh, come out all as one. So you tap one side, tap another, and try and go quarters. So basically you just go 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, with equal blows, and then 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Check how it's going. Yeah, it's coming slowly. Just hope this doesn't break the camera. <laughs> hey. So, uh, let's see if we can get this into focus. So, there's your bearing race. You can see there's a hemisphere in there, and then there's been a lot of grease and shit. So, what you want to do next is clean out that hole, but we'll do the top one next, and then we'll uh, get to the cleaning bit. So, the top one is uh, easier. And more difficult. That's it. It really fucking makes sense. Um, it's easy because you can see what you're doing. It's harder because it's harder to get at. It's not hard to get at per se, it's just you hammer it up towards your face. And gravity's not helping you. Gently, 
here because I want to pop out and hit the frame. Okay, well. You can tell I've done this a lot. Alright, so what I want to do is just clean out all the shit and grease that's in there. It's very important this is as clean as you can possibly get. brand new in there. So you may have some rusty spots etc. Don't sand it, whatever you do, you don't use a Dremel or a power tool. This um, ID is uh, an interference fit with the bearing. If you do anything um, a little, one of the little brass brushes or a little stainless little brush just to maybe take away the the flakes if there are any flakes there really shouldn't be anything in there because like I say it's an interference fit so there's no way for anything to get in do the bottom one as well right so next thing we need to do is that to actually replace the race so this is our new bearing um, it's a tapered roller bearing which look like that so this is the bit that goes on the stem and this is the seat that needs to go in. You can see it's got a, a, tapered, a tapered surface to it. So obviously that needs to go in that way. And then this bit goes on the stem. So one of the first things we need to do is grease the inside of the base ever so lightly. I said grease, I didn't mean grease. So what I've got here is a little can of four in one, uh, three in one, four in one. 3 in 1 which is just basically general purpose oil and what you want to do is smear that in with your finger just a light 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 coating so to install the race um, what some people do is they, this isn't the appropriate size, but they find a socket that's the appropriate size stick the racing and then just try and knock it in. This takes forever and it isn't really brilliant because what you're trying, what you're doing is that these sides are parallel, these sides are parallel and the whole thing needs pressing in. Now you could use a bearing press but it's going to be a hell of a man handling trying to stick this under but that is a better way. However I've got a little contraption that I've been using for years and this is actually a new one. Um, it's very simple, it's like a lot of these bearing presses. It's some threaded rod and I've got a uh, disc of brass that I basically just machine steps on. So with this one, this is the smaller one, the problem with these tapered roller bearings is that the contact face is here which is very very thin and then there's a step on there, a shoulder on there that, that just fits up, so that just lightly sits on there that should sit on there like that. We'll put our drill rod through it. Now we're studying through it, and I've just got an aluminium backer that just sits on here. And then as we tighten it down, it draws it in. So the aluminium backer has to be able to fit inside that bottom race. So I always do the top race first because of the way I do this. You could have a bigger aluminium plate or a steel plate or whatever on the bottom. The reason why I'm using brass and aluminium is so it doesn't mar anything whatsoever, just in case it all just ticks up. So we want to put our race in, just like that, stick our, our brass section on, our pusher, like that, stick our drill rod through, Oops, drill rod, threaded rod, now what we've got is, we've got our aluminium plate that goes in the bottom, put that in there like so, This is just so you can see how this works. So you can see that that sits on that shouldered lip there. And then underneath, you can see our aluminium plate with our washer and our two nuts. And that sits inside. Like I say, you could have a bigger one that could sit across this surface. It doesn't really matter. But this will do both bearings. So all you do is you just measure your bearing size, machine a little step, and this step on this side is for the bottom bearing. So, 
put the other nut off because it's just been a pain in the ass. So you hold the bottom ones, not the wrong way, idiot. Tighten this down. And you'll feel there. That's as tight as it's going to get. You look around, and what you're looking for is the same gap all the way around. Lovely. Oh, what the fuck has gone on here? Ooh. Well, there's something sharp on there. Doing. You wind that back out. The best thing about this is you can feel definitely there's a very positive feed. There's a very positive feedback of when you've hit the bottom. Yeah, there we go. So I'll bring you in for a little snap of that. So there we have it. That's a nice clean install. That's solid on the bottom. You can see that if it focuses. There we go. And uh, there's a brand new lovely tapered seat sat in there. Now you might notice one thing. This bearing taper is actually smaller than the tube. Unlike your... Uh, roller bearing ones. Getting this out is going to be a fucking nightmare. So do remember that. That you have to, this is why I use this tool, you have to get it in straight because if you don't, even if you get it halfway in, it is a bloody nightmare to get them out. So now we've got that done, you can see our roller cage sits in there. Oh, it's lovely. Anyway, so that's part two. Like Any road. So now we've got our bearing in. What you want to do is get your uh, your racing, sorry, bearing. Stick a little bit of oil. Grease is fine as well. I just find that grease sometimes um, when you stick grease in instead of oil, what, ha what tends to happen sometimes is that the bearing race sits ever so slightly off the bottom. Um, and what happens is you get to a point where you crush it down, where sometimes if there's any little voids in the bottom of your steering column, especially rust spots and the rest of it, the um, grease uh, gets hydraulically trapped. It's not the end of the world, but sometimes what that can do is over the years that can actually cause the uh, bearing race to lift out slightly with expansion and contraction with heat and cold and all the rest of it and then what you'll do is you'll get a bit of a, a head that kind of is tight and then binds it tightens up over time any rod that's that one done we've cleaned the bottom race we're gonna smear some oil on the inside of the bottom race um, steering column to receive the bottom race and then we'll insert that one so this is just rinse and repeat really a bit different speed that it's upside down. So smear a bit of oil with your finger in there like so. Now this race for this particular bike and for a lot of most bikes the uh, bearing race for the bottom is bigger and the bearing itself is bigger. The reason being is gravity. So you have your forks, you have your steering column, and the weight of the bike sits on this bearing race and not really this bearing race. So because of that, they put a heavier bearing on the bottom. So what you've got to do is try and make sure when you just stick it in that it's as square up as possible.
As you can see, this one's actually sunk a lot lower. This is one of the problems with using either a socket. It has to be the perfect size, because that's such a small lip on a tapered roller bearing, you can actually do more damage than good. So that's that one done. And we are our spot tight. Yeah, just checking. That's how tight it was. Jobs are good un. Now when I get the workshop up and running, I will sell these kits. Probably use an M10 or an M12 instead of an M6. M8, M10, probably an M10. But I'll sell these kits. And what would be a good idea is I make the kits and actually sell them for a cheap, pretty much material price. Um, so I'll sell them on eBay or something shit like that. And then what you can do is you just put it back up on eBay and uh, sell it for the same price. Sell it for what you bought it for and then these kits can go around because you'll only ever want to do this once in a bloody blue moon. You know, this will probably be enough for the bike's history now. You know, the rollerball bearings are fine but this thing was abused. Um, but now with these buggers in, um, it's probably going to last a lot longer. Anyway, so I've oiled the inside. You can also, and actually, you know what, sod it, I will. A good idea, because you have to put grease on it anyway, is to smother it in grease just to stop any corrosion or whatever. You know what I mean? If we put this on, like so, that's a nice thick layer of this is just general purpose grease and on the top as well just to stop any corrosion because we've got some other bits to do to the frame yet and the rest of the bike before we even start thinking about putting the uh, suspension back together that's the top one done right so that's it for uh, part one part two will be me getting the bearing races off the steering stem and uh, fitting the roller bearings to that. <laughs>